Hey guys, thanks for joining me for episode of Learn Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Dice Throne. This is a game by Roxley Games. It is a 2-6 to six player game that takes roughly 20-60 to 60 minutes to play. And it is a competitive game, so each player is working against the other players to defeat them and be the overall winner at the end of the game. So in the game itself, the Mad King hosts a grand tournament where he invites all the different champions all over the lands to a, a grand tournament each year. And the overall end result is if one champion is able to defeat him, they will gain the throne. In over a thousand years, a thousand tournaments, no one has been able to defeat the Mad King yet. So will this be the year? We'll have to find out. So each player in the game is going to choose a champion to play, and the this is season one, but there is a season two as well that introduces all kinds of new heroes, and both of them are compatible with each other so you can use any heroes in any combinations you'd like to. So in the game itself, each player is going to get a custom set of dice, a custom deck, and their player board that they're going to be working with. And during the game, the players are going to be playing different card combinations and, and different cards that they have to increase and upgrade their abilities. Uh, and then they're going to roll their dice to try to trigger some of those abilities and play those cards to manipulate and change some of the results to those. And your opponents can do the same thing, trying to change the results and manipulate your dice so that you don't get those abilities off. From there, then you're trying to activate those abilities to do damage, to get status effects out there, to heal your character, all kinds of different things depending upon which character you've chosen. And at the end of the day, if you are able to reduce your opponent's health to zero, then you will win and defeat them. So my opinions on this one, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Like I said, there's a couple of seasons to this already. They're working on season three, and they're going to introduce some new things with that one as well, which I'm super excited about. I can't wait to see what they're going to add. But these first two seasons are excellent. Both of them are very, very well done, and they play very well, like I said, no matter if you're playing a one versus one or one versus more than one or even on a team versus another team. There's all kinds of different things and interactions you can have, and they just work really well. Well together and even when you're playing with any game that's larger than one versus one they introduce a new phase which is a targeting phase which will allow you to roll it or have you roll a die and that will be your target for your opponent so that way then you're not always picking on one person or that person feels like you're picking on them you're like hey it's it's the dice that did it that that wasn't my fault the dice told me to attack you <laughs> so you can blame them for that so there's all kinds of different things that they introduce, but it plays very, very well and very fast. Uh, it's a very fast combat, and everything really works very well together. So I would definitely recommend checking this one out if you guys get a chance. But of course, these are just my opinions. I'd love to let, to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know if this is one you've played, if you enjoy this, who your favorite character is, or who I should be checking out. I'd love to be able to check out Season 2 as well and potentially do gameplay videos for it. So let me know if you guys want to see those, or if you do, which heroes or champions would you like me to see or have go head to head? As I'm always up to hearing from you guys, love to start a conversation. So if you enjoy these videos, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribe to my channel, as it really does help me to continue to grow and bring these videos to you guys. And if you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table, and I'll teach you guys how to play. Each player is going to receive a custom set of five dice for their character, so here we have the Paladin and the Shadow Thief die. And with these dice, each die is going to list a number in the top corner and a symbol. And the number is 1 through 6, with the symbols matching up with the character and will be used during the offense and defensive role phases. And I'll show you guys more of this later. Each player is going to receive a custom deck of 32 cards for the character they've chosen. And each character's deck is going to be broken down into two different kinds of cards. We have the action cards, which will be signified by the star in the top corner. Each of these cards will have a cost in combat points to activate that card. And we'll have a symbol in the top corner here that will tell you when you can use that card. And there are three different symbols. We have the die symbol, which means you can use it during your offensive, defensive, and targeting phases. We'll have the main symbol icon, which will allow you to use it during the main phase one or two. And finally, the instant symbol, which will allow you to use it any time. Then we'll have the name of the card and its effect. Then the player will also have upgrade cards, which will allow them to upgrade their different abilities throughout the game. Each of these cards will have an up arrow in the top corner, the cost of the card, and again, will tell you when you can play that card, which will be during the main phase and again the name of the upgrade and its effects. Now with these cards one other thing to note is that not all heroes will have the same upgrades or be able to upgrade all of their upgrades 
all the way from level 2 to level 3. Some heroes will only have upgrades for level 2, and even the heroes that have upgrades level 3 may not have them for all of the different upgrades. So one other thing to point out is, for example, with this one here, we have Righteous Combat level 2. If we happen to get the Righteous Combat level 3 first, we can choose to upgrade all the way to level 3 by just paying the cost in combat points. But if we had already upgraded to level 2, then we'll simply pay the difference of the two, so we'd only need to pay two more combat points to upgrade to level 3 if we already have level 2 upgraded. Each player is also going to receive a character board matching the character they've chosen, and these may look different than yours if you're playing with the Dice Throne Season 2 boards, but everything on them is exactly the same. Each board is going to have a number of different abilities, which are going to be color coordinated to the three different types, which we have passive abilities, which are going to have the purple background, and will tell you when they activate, but they're always going to be active. Then we have the offensive abilities, which will have a blue background to them, and these will be used during the offensive phase when you roll dice, and they're going to correspond to the symbols on the dice or the numbers on the dice with them. So for example, with Retaliate here, it'll list the name of that action, the number of dice that you need to activate it and the symbols that are on it, and then if you use that activation, what you're going to receive for it. So for example, with our roll here, we have the three helmets and the praying hands. And it does not matter on the numbers. It could be all fours, it could be all threes, as those are the two sides that have the helmets. With the small straights, again, it does not matter on the symbols underneath, just the numbers you would need the numbers to correspond to meet the small or large straight to activate this ability. And during your turn, you can only activate one ability for the offensive attack, even if you have the dice to activate more than one. And then finally, we have the def defensive abilities, which will be activated when you take damage from an offensive attack of an opponent's, if you're able to roll defensive rolls. Finally, at the very bottom of the card is going to be the each player is going to have an ultimate ability which cannot be stopped. All that you can do is modify the player's dice, and I'll go into this more later. But once an offensive ability goes off, the player is going to resolve all the effects of that ability. Finally, in the middle of the board is where you're going to be placing all your status effect tokens when you receive them, whether they're positive or negative status effects. And I'll cover this more later as well. Each player is also going to receive a leaflet that is matching their character they've chosen. And the leaflet will have the name of the character on the side here, and on the bottom side will be a breakdown of each of their different symbols on their dice, and the numbers corresponding to those symbols. On the other side, we're going to have each one of the status effect tokens that that player has access to, and each status effect token or section will list the name of that status effect, if it is a positive or negative status effect, if you can stack it, meaning that you can give one player multiple of that token, and the effects of that token. And for setup, you can also just place the tokens on the side over the image of each token. Another example of this is with the Shadow Thief. And as you guys can see, with his poison effect, it is a neg negative status effect. And it has a stack limit of three, meaning that a character can only have up to three poison tokens on them at any time. For player setup, each player will choose a character they like to play as and receive their character board, their character's leaflets, all of the different status effect tokens for that character, and you can place all those along the side on the icons. Each player will also receive their combat point dial, and you can set that to two, as well as their health dial, and you will set that to 50 initially. And then you'll also get a quick reference card, which will list the turns and the different icons on the cards. Finally, each player will receive their deck of 32 cards, which you can shuffle up. And then once it's shuffled up, you can go ahead and draw the top four cards of the deck to be your starting hands. You'll also collect your five custom dice. From there, you're ready to start the game. Dice Throne is played over an undefined number of turns, with each turn consisting of seven phases if you're playing a one versus one, and eight phases if you're playing with more than one versus one. And I'm going to go into detail about each one of these phases. This will continue until in a one versus one game, one of the players has been reduced to zero health, with the other player being the overall winner. If both players are reduced to zero health at the same time, then the game will end in a tie. In a more than one versus one game, then the player, the last player standing will be the overall winner or last team standing. The last step before starting the game is that each player will roll one die to determine who is the starting player. So our Shadow Thief will be the starting player for this game. Moving into our Shadow Thief's turn, the first phase in the turn is the upkeep phase. And during this phase, you're going to check and make sure that any of the status effect tokens that your character has in the middle are not triggered. 
And some of them will be positive, some of them will be negative. For example, with our Shadow Thief, if she had a poison or had given a poison to the Paladin during his upkeep phase, that would be resolved and he would take one damage per poison token he had. The second phase in the turn is the income phase. And with this being the very first turn and the Shadow Thief being the first player, she would have to skip this phase. But during this phase, the player will receive one combat point up to their maximum of 15 combat points and will draw one card from their deck. The third phase in the round is the first main phase. And during this phase, you can play ability upgrade cards, main phase action cards, and you can also choose to sell cards where you'll gain one combat point per card you sell. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what cards we have for her. So we have a sneak attack, which can be played during the main phase, and this will get us a sneak attack status token. We also have an upgrade to our counter strike, and that one's going to cost us four combat points, which we don't have right now. We only have two. We have one time phase, which is this one's going to be used during the dice phases. And finally, we have card trick will allow us to target an opponent and have them discard a card randomly. And that one's going to cost us two. So let's go ahead and start out. We'll spend one combat point to activate Sneaky. So we'll move our gauge down and put that in our discard pile. And then we'll gain one token for the sneak attack, which we'll place in her area. And she can use that at a later point. From there, let's go ahead and sell the card trick as I don't really want to play this one. Now you can hold on to these. You can use them in later turns if you want to, but we're going to go ahead and sell it to get another combat point. From there, we're going to hold off as we don't have enough for our, uh, for our counter strike ability. And we want to kind of hold on to this one for now. Once you've completed performing all the different actions you want to during your main phase, you're ready to move into the next phase, which is the offensive roll phase. During this phase, you're going to start off by rolling your five dice. And then from there, then you can choose any of those dice to hold on to. And then you can re-roll any of those dice up to two additional times. You can also play any of the cards that'll have the dice symbol in the top corner if you can pay their costs and activate their abilities. For example, with this one one more time, this one allow us to roll uh, to take one additional re-roll of up to five dice during our offensive roll phase. Now our opponent can also choose to play cards during that phase as well if he has any of those cards that match those criteria. And in that way he can use them to change the different symbols on our die or force us to reroll certain dice so that we don't activate an ability. So let's go ahead and start. Well we got three bags here. So let's go ahead and hold on to those and then we'll keep going. We got another one and we have one more roll. So we got five bags. So in that way, then we can choose what to use, and we have Pickpocket here, which will allow us to gain four combat points. Now at this point, if we have, had done an offensive attack, such as the da Dagger Strike, where it's going to do damage, we would move on to the next phase, which is the targeting roll phase, if you're playing with more than two players. If you're not, then this, play, this phase is skipped, and you would move right into the defensive roll phase. During the defensive roll phase, if it is an attack that can be blocked, such as the Dagger Strike, if it is an attack that does collateral damage, or it is an ultimate ability, it cannot be stopped and there will not be any defensive roll. Otherwise, our other player would get to make his defensive roll and apply any effects of the dice that he rolls for that. For example, with our Counter Strike here, we would roll five dice, and for each dagger, we would do one damage back to the player that is dealing damage to us, and if we rolled a dagger and a shadow, then we would also inflict one poison. And these would not stack. So if we would roll another, two daggers and two shadows, then we could not add two points of poison. It would only apply, be applied once. And that goes true for activating an ability as well. So we couldn't split this up and do the pickpocket with the two and then do another pickpocket with the three. It asked, it, it can, we can only activate each ability one time and only once, no matter how many different abilities we could potentially activate. So from there, we're going to go ahead and resolve this and we'll gain four combat points. And if a shadow was rolled, you could take some or all from your opponents, but we did not roll a shadow. So we're just going to gain those points. So she moves up to six. The seventh phase in a round is another main phase, and this is identical to the first one where you're going to be able to play ability upgrade cards again, any main phase action cards, and you can also choose to sell cards again for combat points. So with our player, we did pick up those four combat points, so let's go ahead and buy this upgrade now. So we're going to go ahead and spend those four, so we'll move back down to two. 
and then we'll get to place this right on top of the other one. So now this is our ability. We don't have any other cards that we want to sell or play, so that'll be the end of our main phase two. And the final phase of the player's turn is the discard phase. At the end of this phase, you must have six or fewer cards in your hands. If you have more, then you must sell them before the end of your turn. Once you're all done and you meet those criteria, then we're ready to move on to the next player's turn to take their turn. So moving over to our Paladin player, well, let's go ahead and go through one more turn. So first off, we're going to go ahead and start with the upkeep phase, and he does not have any status effects tokens to worry about at this point. So then we move on to the income. So he is going to gain one combat point, and we'll get to draw another card. From there, we're going to move into his first main phase, so he'll go through his cards and shoes if he wants to play any. So he's going to go ahead and play his Holy Light upgrade card. So we'll go ahead and place that there and spend two combat points to do so. Now he has some other cards, but he doesn't really have any more combat points to spend for these at the moment. So let's go ahead and just hold on to these. And we'll move into his next phase, which is the offensive roll phase. All right, so we got, oh man, we got three sixes. So that's really good. So let's go ahead and try for some more. No luck there. And we got another one. Wow. All right. So we got six or four sixes, which will allow us to initiate this righteous prayer. We're going to deal eight damage and then gain. we're going to gain a crit and two CP. So first off, before we go ahead and resolve this, the other player will have that opportunity to play any cards if they want to, to try to get us to re-roll or to change symbols on these dice so we can't activate this ability. And likewise, if we want to play any cards, we also could. Is, for example, if we had a card that would be able to change the, one of these dice to a six, that would be fantastic to play our ultimate ability. But we don't, and our player over there does not have anything else that they would like to play either. So then we're going to resolve this. We will do 8 damage to that player. And then so they're going to make their defensive roll. So with our Shadow Thief, she's going to have to choose which one of her defensive abilities that she wants to trigger. So we're going to go ahead and do the Counter Strike 2. And we'll get to roll all 5 of our dice one time. So with that, she's going to be looking for daggers and shadows. So she got 1 dagger, so she's going to do 2 damage per dagger she rolled. And if she rolled a dagger and a shadow, she's also going to do poison. So she'll give one poison token to our paladin. And then she's going to do two damage to him as well. So he'll reduce his by two. And then he is going to do eight damage to her. So she's down to 42. Now he's also going to gain a crit for that. So he'll get one crit token. And he's going to gain two combat points. From there, then, he's going to move into his second main phase. So again, if he wanted to, he could play any cards. So he is going to go ahead and activate this one to upgrade as well. So that's going to cost him three. And then he'll place that one there. He is out of combat points, so that is all he can do. And he does not have more than six cards in hand. So his turn is over, and we would move back over to our Shadow Thief to take the next turn. This is going to continue going back and forth between the players until one player's health is reduced to zero. In that situation, the other player is going to be the winner. And like I said, it is possible for the players to be able to deal enough offensive damage and defensive damage to kill each other at the same time, in which case the game will end in a tie. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below or swing by my Facebook and Twitter accounts. Let me know what you guys are playing or doing over there. I'd love to start a conversation with you guys there or in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it, and I do try to take into account everything you guys say to make the best possible videos. And if you like these videos, if you enjoy what I do, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing to my channel, as it really does help me to continue to grow and be able to bring these games to you guys. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.